<sighs> that was cool. Thank you. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that. Um, one thing I was kind of thinking, and I'd be curious to, to hear your thoughts, because you, you play with like systems or, or uh, sort of behavioral models as like a kind of a performative thing. You yeah. Know? Like when you're when you're in a particularly a situation like this where we're like improvising or it's a performance, it's not just an exploration. Um, how do you negotiate? How much of the, your time do you spend doing? I guess like systemic exposition, like figuring out how things are reacting versus musical exposition. Yep. And are those different? Like like what? How do you negotiate that? It's it is kind of weird. I, I should say this is the first time I've played this instrument with another person. Okay. <laughs> so normally the entire set of negotiations is me working out what the instrument is trying to do or find sweet spots. So that exploratory aspect, when does it become performance? Uh, there's definitely having to then triangulate another person and work out, well, what am I going to do in response to this? And, and mm. do I feel like I'm foreground or background here? Or should I pull forwards or pull back? Some of that is then is then places where I'm like, okay, just let, I'm going to let the instrument do its own thing here and I'm going to make very small variations to that just so it doesn't tip over. But sometimes it does tip over because I haven't fully explored that place yet. Mm -hmm. And when it does tip over, well, then it's just a contingency you've got to respond to, I think. Mm. But yeah, I, I, there was definitely some places in there where I was like, oh, shit, I didn't expect that to happen mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to go with it. And it's and there was a, a kind of a, a, a foreground background thing going on and suddenly mm. I did something that just flipped it yeah, yeah. unintentionally. And I, I think when I'm playing on my own, I, I kind of like that unintentionalness. It's something to respond to, but I think in this situation, and again, having not done this in a while, I felt like, oh, I, I, I feel like, <laughs> it, feel, it felt like more of an error here than it would normally feel <laughs> like. And do you think that's the context of duo or the context of this context? Like, I think that's the context, just the duo. Yeah, just yeah. that there's another agency in the room and they've got their, you've got your ideas and there are things mm -hmm. you're trying to do and, and we get to a place and, uh, and, and then the, the instrument sometimes can become like a, a third person in the room that does something unexpected. Hmm. How, how, what, how, did, how was it for you? I, say? I mean, I, I quite enjoyed the performance. There's like a couple parts to it. Like one is, the, the reason I ask that question is because it's something that I, for my own, let's say like if I was doing a solo performance, I tend to be wary of circumstances in which I'm using um, either a novel instrument or a novel mm. thing to not... Um, just play with my food in front of people, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, like we're like, oh, what happens if I do that? You know. But at the same time, you kind of have to, in an unknown, like yeah. I don't know how this amp is going to behave with this snare, how this, how our both feedback systems are going to interact, which they did kind of a music way. There, there is some required um, understanding and playing with edges there to yeah. make sense of that, um, which I think is pragmatically required and musically required. So I think in those circumstances, I like it, it's I'm I, I withhold my reservations because like it. like you kind of have have to happen. That being said, like, it, because I'm, I'm quite accustomed to playing with feedback stuff and feedback with different apps. Like I'm used to like the unfamiliarity of chaotic systems, but it's a very different thing playing with another person who has yeah. a similar instrument and since they're feedback based, that they co the systems co mingle. Um, like the, the feedback behaviors couple in a way that um, has nothing to do with me and has, well, little to do with me and little to do with you. It's like a, a, a larger agency that is formed from that. Um, it's been a long time since I play, like just before we were talking about like Richard Craig when I had done some feedback stuff with him, like playing with another instrument that has feedback is uh, unusual for me. And I think, yeah, it brings out some cool musical things where the systems become alive in a third agency kind of way. Like where it's like all of a sudden you've got a harmonic and there's a harmonic here and like these are kind of playing off each other in a way that and even before it's audible because I can feel I often have my hand on the drum I can feel when the drum is starting to vibrate it may not necessarily pick up to to do a feedback note yet but I can feel the response activating like in a haptic way so kind of like writing that okay like there's a, a thing here and sort of massaging the levels and obviously with the amp it sometimes gets a little squeaky and, and things like that but it's uh yeah, I really enjoyed negotiating that and the aesthetic outcome of that negotiation. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. there was a bunch of places, like you said, where there was a, a very physical resonance between the two things. Mm. We, we hit on the same thing in the same place and there is doubtless some kind of influence going on between mm. the two things. I liked that 
that these two instruments are quite different in terms of frequency range. I was basically the bass, bass yeah, feedback, yeah. <laughs> you were the higher end. Um, you reminded me there that I, I have done some duo feedback stuff before, but it's interesting that it was in such a different context that I didn't really even think of it here. Some stuff with um, Anthony Stillabauer over at Huddersfield mm. where we had two two drums, we had some microphones and transducers just on yeah, them, yeah. but we were we were doing things like he would have my transducer on his drum and I'd have mine on and his mm -hmm. on mine. So we had this really coupled system, but a big part of that was the way we were playing was very, very slow. Mm. We would just sit and let the system evolve to a point and then nudge something and see where it would go. And it, I think with this instrument as well, I'm, even the, the the one time when I played in Cafe Otto, because that was something where it was just me and I, I, I really wanted to put on a show, so I wanted to, to try and, I don't know, make, make it a slightly more active performance. And I really enjoyed that, I really got into it. But then also with this instrument, there's quite a lot of times where I'm just sitting going, okay, I'm just going to wait and see what this does. And then trying to negotiate that, thinking, am I offering you a space to do something in? Do we have mm. something here where we're both just sitting and that's nice? It is, it's kind of conversational in that way, which I yeah, like. Yeah. And, and even with that, like following on that, the, the idea of not to specifically draw a distinction, but like but, but between, let's say, like an, a performative agent in a feedback system versus like an architect of behavior in a mm. feedback system, where like it, you would put a thing, in, I'm thinking of like your symbol stuff, like where you might like put a thing in motion and then you might kind of give it a nudge every now and then, but like you're, you're more tending, uh, yeah, tending a system, but not as a, a an explicit performative agent. Whereas an instrument like this is kind of, I mean, I, I guess it could be played in any number of ways, like an instrument, but I've often heard it used as like an in-between where it, it is kind of doing its own thing, but you, one can engage with it more um, performatively because obviously you have strings and you can adjust them, the faders, and it, it's a bit more of a hands-on thing. Like, do you... Um, I don't know, do you find more affinity with one of those approaches versus the other? Do you see those as different things, I, I guess, maybe fundamentally? And um, yeah, if you could just, what are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, sure. So even in just what we were doing there, I when I started it, I was I was very much in a, let's just see where this, where the system wants to evolve to and just sit. And then I... I quickly got into a place where I, I just needed, I needed to feel like I was doing more stuff for a minute. Mm. Um, so I, I pushed it along a little bit further and pushed it in, into some places. But then a lot of the time, what I, what I want to find, the, the systems aspect for me of it is trying to find, like you were saying, where you can haptically, you can feel the system mm. wanting to change or wanting something wanting to come out. It's kind of the same with this. The only frustrating thing with this is that you can feel it's changing, but you can't always tell which string it is. Yeah. And there was... <laughs> The, it's happened before where I thought it was one string, and, and so what you can do really nicely is if, say, the G string is is feeding back, you can start manipulating the C string, and then if you mm. bring up the gains, you get to a point where they just start to cross over a yeah, bit, yeah. and then they start to interact with each other. And that's mm. what I'm trying to find is, in, is interactions. But like you said earlier about you know, eating your dinner in front of people, there is, <laughs> yeah. there is a little bit of that going on in there. Yeah, I'm, trying yeah. to, I'm trying to find a place, and once I find a place, that's something I can do something with. Hmm. But in, and so it's, it, it is mostly sitting back and waiting for systems to get to a place where they're doing something that I like, which is usually oscillating between a couple of things. But in that piece, I definitely moved a lot more to deliberately setting up something where I'm physically oscillating and just finding a spot where the instrument is responding in a way that's interesting and then trying to just vary that in little ways. And, and trying, to, trying to find a place where it's synergistic with what you're doing. Hmm. Trying to trying to see is there something here where I can just accompany, or if you are moving away from something, can I move away in a complementary way, but without just Mickey Mousing? I'm yeah. not sure I even answered the question. There. No, no, I mean I I don't even know if I asked a question <laughs> specifically. I mean, with my kind of like like Insta, I've been like doing a lot of 3D printing and designing stuff yeah. lately. I kind of wonder, like, if having like a little LED indicator per string of like the gain level, like like a little mini. Uh, you know, like, you know, the yep. instrument fader thing, like, like just down by the bridge or something. So you can kind of see that might, would be, I think maybe beneficial to something like that. I, I started trying to build something like that on guitar with the help from a friend and it just, it, it didn't get very far. There are, yeah, the approach we take wasn't working, but exactly that. Yeah. Guitar is even worse, six strings. And especially oh, yeah, when yeah. you've got this gently, slowly rising in mm -hmm. feedback. Yeah, that would be a really useful thing. That might be something I investigate a little further. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I think it would, probably be not too onerous to kind of incorporate. It's just a matter of like, I mean, it's a very elegant instrument that yeah. doesn't suit itself well to 
RGB LEDs <laughs> just kind of like a, <laughs> just popping out of, out of nowhere. But it, like, but but it, you could very easily you could just oh yeah or even like above here. like where I can't see it on the the bit of right. the, the back plate just there. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. idea. Quite useful thing, and just by the fader too. So obviously you can kind of know where yeah. where things are kind of nudging along. Um, there's a thing that I was going to specifically ask, but I, I it slipped away from me when I was kind of on that question there. Um, oh yeah yeah. The, like sweet spots and stuff because I know like with feedback that's a very a very desirable thing and I just kind of want to ask this is maybe more a zoomed out conceptual question um sweet spots I think are, are like very ma ma open with an assumption materially intrinsic like this system has these yep. sweet spots that are in inherent to it um or like if a modular synth like the, you know this thing like I in my own aesthetic work I tend to be wary of these kind of systems uh, this is non-judgmental I tend to be aware of these kind of things because I feel I not that I feel like I need to have a lot of agency but like I feel suspicious if I'm like here and I'm like oh if I'm here and here that's kind of oh it's doing this this it's a thing that it wouldn't really know but aesthetically this may not be the most interesting sound that's happening yeah to me systemically I know that this and this is doing something unusual but the sounding result may not necessarily be I don't know that this is just sort of I, I, I just sort of therapy dumped on you there. Like, like, <laughs> like, I guess like you, you enjoy sweet spot a lot. I guess it's, yeah. it, it's a lot of what you, so like, yeah. Like how do you, how do you like, is it just creating, uh, systems in which sweet spots can evolve or be you know, like, like what, yeah. talk to me about the sweet spot. So by the whole thing I've been messing so much with, especially in feedback is, is knowing that, any system, so a, a string that has a sweet spot, that has a res one, maybe two resonances that it really wants to happen at, and then finding a way to manipulate the system so that that resonance can't happen anymore, but the energy still has to go somewhere. So it's constantly thinking about the feedback system as being there is X amount of energy. It's got to find outputs. It wants to find outputs through those resonant sweet spots. And once something becomes obvious, once this is obviously the place it wants to resonate, then finding ways to cut that out, finding mm. ways to to reduce that and see where's the energy going to flow now. And then you see the secondary level of sweet spots and then you block those off and you see the tertiary level. And it gets to a point then where it starts to get very chaotic and unpredictable, mm. which can also be interesting. Or it can get to a point where you've just left it no more outlets, so you just get noise and it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't doesn't really do anything. Yeah, yeah. But it, in truth, that works easier for things like microphone feedback and and the kind of very still drum feedback that I would do. Whereas with this, because you've got four, you've got eight strings, four strings and four sympathetics acting as one, the, and then you're also messing with with string lengths. There's a lot of stuff going on, uh, and I think then when I want to make the performance more active, like you'll have seen, there's a lot of places when I'm when I'm using this rod. Um, just manipulating the string tensions, just seeing where am I going to find the place where the string tension mm. wants to bite with the feedback, and this string takes over from that string. So that's that's usually what it is. But like I said, again, I, I feel like in, in terms of ther therapy dumping, this is <laughs> this is a kind of exposed situation for me yeah, because yeah. I'm so used to just being in this little nerdy place with the <laughs> with me and this instrument yeah, yeah. that then triangulating that, as I said before, with someone else, mm. um, it just adds a whole a whole other thing. Yeah, and so what about? I wanted to ask you about mm. about also because you're using a feedback system. Are there are there often times where you like particularly at the end there? I could see you cupping to try and just see just find that little spot where it was going to do something yeah, gentle, yeah. and then are are there often times then when you will also say manipulate manipulate the drum a little bit or manipulate other parts of the environment to just let it change and see, see how it's going to change on its own. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for sure. I, I've, in, in doing this a bunch, I've gotten kind of used to the fact that there's like, the drum will have a fundamental, there'll be a room fundamental. Yeah. And then I can also get, I mean, the harmonics of the drum, but sort of fundamentals of a cavity that I can sort of make around the area. Yeah. So I can sort of tap into a couple different um, harmonic series as such. So I'm kind of used to that uh, negotiating, but I think because I tend to like um, faster, more gestural language in general. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, the drum can vary quite nicely, and it's sort of vibrato as well. You can just kind of get a tone going and and sort of sit with it on its own. It won't it won't bifurcate too much, yeah. Um, unless you're in like a very uh, odd environment, but I kind of like being able to go uh, quite quick with it. This amp, I didn't trust enough to not get too hairy in doing some of that, which is you know that's one of the natures of, of changing setups with feedback. Um, but I, I do enjoy 
being able to tap into those things. Like sometimes I'll activate it because there's that, but we largely hear the harmonic there. There'll be yeah. a tone like that's lower there than what we're kind of hearing. Um, you, know, you can kind of find that here, but sometimes if you hear, you just kind of get a room sound. So there's like an interesting like kind of bifurcation here that you can sometimes get. And then here and here, here it actually seemed quite responsive. I felt like a magician at some point where I had yeah. here and then I was like one harmonic. And then it was like another one, which was kind of like, I felt like, and do the thing now, you know? Um, but it's just, that's just a, a you know, a, a symptom of this specific um, circumstance and probably the note that you were yep. playing. Um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of that you can do. And then putting objects, I didn't bring any quartales, but putting objects on here can split the head up and yeah. you can kind of get different tones that way. It can get quite um, responsive in sort of the frequency and pitch choices that you can get, mm. but it does take a little bit of time with that situ and that amp and that mic. I mean, the mic I'm used to, but like the drum and the objects yeah. to like get the responsiveness out of it. And you can be used to the mic, but that doesn't matter because oh, yeah, the mic yeah. is only part of a system. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it matters a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's never it's never one hundred percent of the thing. No, no. Yeah, I think in terms of language as well, the the more gestural, I I've done stuff that is more, and I went a little more gestural in that. But mm. my my inclination is usually to sit back and let the system change mm -hmm. and make such small. I, I think I was trying to bridge for myself the places where I would make a, a definite <coughs> gestural shift where yeah, something yeah. would happen versus places where I'm just incrementally shifting something mm -hmm. until I reach a bite point of some sort. Mm. And then sometimes trying to turn those bite points into gestures, but they're often out of my direct control. So the gesture happens sometimes unintentionally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew some of that, like, because I knew the instrument, I knew some of your music, so I kind of, like, wanted to enjoy, you know, some of the sort of slow-moving yeah. stuff. Um, so that's part of why I was like, oh, yeah, we should do it with, with, with that. Yeah. yeah, damn right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, shall we play some more? Yep. Um, take this out of the mix.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.